Hey guys, welcome back to another Skateboarding Japan podcast. We're here at Design Festa Gallery in Harajuku with legendary skateboarder Steve Caballero. Steve, how you going, mate? How's it going? Yeah, good, dude. Nice, nice to meet you, buddy. Nice to meet you. Cool. So, Steve, what brings you back to Japan? Um, actually, Nash brought me back to Japan. Oh, okay. <laughs> to do uh, some art shows. <laughs> okay, cool, yeah, cool. Last year I came, uh, Nash from Burnout Magazine invited me to come to his city of Ottawa. Ottawa and okay. we did a, he has a car show there every year. So last year was uh, Customs uh, Culture City 5. Ah, and then okay. this one is Custom Culture City 6. six okay. And then I asked him, hey, you know, to come back next year, hey, can I do another show? Cool. So now here Tuesday, uh, doing a show gallery, cool. uh, gallery showing with a couple artists, Dirty K, Makoto, Mr. G, Boo, and Jet Wrench, uh, oh, very boy. famous. Uh, Hot Rod Pinstripe artist. Oh, cool. Yeah, so yeah, um, man, no. I'm stoked, you know, and I have here my, some original work and some prints yeah. to uh, show the Japanese crowd. Uh, most Japanese people uh, know me from my skating, exactly. but they don't really know that I'm an artist as well. Yeah. So I'm just trying to break into the whole art scene, and I'm in the Hot Rod scene as well, and they kind of mesh together, yeah, that's you true. know. So, um, yeah, that's why I'm here. Yeah, great. A lot of it just kind of shows the personality of the things that I'm into, mm -hmm. you know, um, I don't really paint anything I'm not really into, okay. you know, so, yeah. um, and you know, I have a very large variety of likes and oh, it kind of transcends to other people like the same interest, you know, so yeah. if I bring, if you notice my prints, yeah. you know, they're all, they all vary in different images and different icons from different eras, oh, you know, yeah. and um, there's always someone in, in the crowd that, that they're, they're, there's a connection there, That's you true. know. And, uh, you know, I did all these, these uh, kind of like crazy uh, rap fink, uh, <laughs> cartoony, they're kind of like the old 60s hot rod, Ed Roth. Ah, uh, okay. You know, so. So, Steve, um, just a couple of questions about skating. I, everybody knows you, but um, yeah. what got you started in skateboarding? Like, what, in, what inspired you to, to get into skateboarding? Um, you know, just like any, any uh, young kid, you know, skateboarding, there were skateboarders back in the late 70s yeah. around our neighborhood. There was magazines and, you know, it's just, it just very, it looks interesting, you mm -hmm. know, it looks fun, you know, and I started reading the magazines and discovering that there was these skateboard parks yeah. in LA and, you know, I just had, I just dreamed to like one day, yeah. you know, skateboard on this like cement surface that had, you know, transitions and bowls. Yeah. And one year, my dad brought me down to Southern California, okay. which was a skateboard park right across the street from Disneyland. Okay, okay. And we visited there with my best friend, and my dad took us and went and skated there, and I just fell in love with it and yeah. came back home and built my own ramps. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, cool. You know, I was trying to emulate what I saw in the magazine. Yeah. And it didn't come out very well. I mean, I had like, <laughs> I built like a, I had a fence was like six, six foot. Yep. And I had like about a foot of vert and yep. I built this transition so yep. the tranny was five feet. Ooh, so okay. it was very difficult to like I can go up it. You know? I imagine I was like, so, yeah. Why is this so hard? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't understand dimensions and mm -hmm. you know, so <clears throat> later on when I when I started skating oh actually I made a bank ramp that was much easier. That's you know, cool. so um and then I heard that there was these skateboard parks being built in my own neighborhood. Yeah. Okay. You know, so um once they were built, I started going there. I was a local and um, got on the park team. We started traveling around the circuit. There was other skateboard parks around the Bay Area. Yeah. I live in NorCal. Yeah. And uh, st our team started becoming the best team in NorCal. So then we got invited to Southern California in their yeah. circuit. Yeah. And then that's when I met Stacy Peralta in uh, 1979. Okay. And he was a, one of the judges of the competition. Okay. And once he saw me skate, he wanted me to be on this team that he was starting. Yeah. And then that was the Bones Brigade. Nice, dude. Yeah, nice. So. Yeah, actually, I, I watched um, Search for Animal Chin again last awesome. night. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Man, that, like that quad hand plan that you guys all yeah. did together on the yeah. Animal Chin, that's, oh, that was epic. Yeah, that was, you know, that was just all being very spontaneous. Yeah, cool. You know, we the ramp, the Animal Chin ramp was only in existence for about maybe six six days okay. six or seven days yeah. it was it was built in four days and we filmed on it three days and then it was torn down okay. so once we got there I mean our, all our minds started thinking 
hey, let's do doubles. Hey, let's do triples. Hey, let's do quadruples. Really? And then that was the very first spine ever. Yeah, really? No one had ever built a spine before. Really? Ramp. Yeah. Wow, okay. Cool. So that was my, me and Lance's idea, yeah. you know, and then the mini ramp on top of the deck. I mean, yeah, those were sick. ideas that me and Lance put together. Really? And uh, then they made the ramp. And, you know, it's kind of like an artist, you know? Yeah. It's like skaters are like artists. You, you, yeah. you know, you go to a place and you just try to be creative and see what you can do. And That's true. That's how we came up with the um, yeah. quadruple hand plant. Right. What was what was Tony Hawk like when you first started skating with him? Because um, I I watched an interview last yeah. night of you and you you said he was chewing some gum and you were in a in a spa or in a jacuzzi. Oh yeah, yeah. We used to your... we used to stay at um, Stacey Peralta's house, okay. his parents' house, and they had a jacuzzi. Yeah. And uh, it was kind of like one of those uh, um, college uh, hazing. Thing, you know, uh, me and McGill were teasing because he was like the, the new guy on the team. Yeah. And, you know, he was very impressionable and he really wanted to kind of fit in with us. So we were just teasing him, you know, and just said, hey, you know, you want to be part of our crew. You know, you got to do what we say. You yeah. know? And he's like, well, I'll do anything. <laughs> okay, well, that gum you're, you're chewing, let me have it. I'm going to stick it in my toes. And, oh. And then now you have to chew it. So, oh. okay, I'll do it. <laughs> okay. So, uh, he went for it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. So we were just teasing. You no, know, that's fine. Just, just having a laugh. Man. you got to take the piss. That's but, okay. Uh, as you all know, Tony's had the last last laugh with oh, all of us. That's true. That's true. <laughs> that's true. So, um, just, just one more question. Um, I, saw the, I saw an interview with you and Kristen Hussoy yesterday. Mm. And Hussoy said that, Caballero, you're Japanese. Yeah. Are you Japanese? Quarter Japanese. Quarter yeah. Japanese, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so what? So your family name before was Naka? Nakahara. Nakahara, yeah. okay. Which is kind of really crazy because um, I did not learn that until my dad passed away in 95. Okay. So this whole time, my mother and my father kind of kept this under the like under the wraps as far as us having some kind of Japanese culture. Okay. And I never, never knew that. And then when, when my dad passed away, my brother's reading the eulogy and, yeah. you know, they kind of talk about y your, your father's um, history and everything. Yeah. And then it starts saying all these things about his dad was Japanese. And I'm like, wait, his dad's Japanese. That means mm -hmm. I'm Japanese. Like, what's going on sure. here? No, and then I heard the whole Nakahara thing. I had never, I was clueless. Yeah, that's cool. So once I heard that, it was really cool to, to find that out because... And I've always had this attraction to dragons. Yeah. You know, that's been oh, kind yeah. of like my icon. Yeah. You know, so it kind of all came together and I was like, wow, maybe that's why, you know. I, okay. And the dragon is a very um, iconic, yeah. you know, character for the Japanese and the Chinese. Yeah, that's true. You know, so, um, yeah, it's kind of all, okay. you know, kind of all fit together. It's like, well, wow, it's pretty cool. It's really cool how it, it all kind of meshes together like that's that. true. <clears throat> Actually, that was one of the questions that I was going to ask you, like, what was the inspiration mm. behind the dragon, but you just answered that, so um, that's fine. Well, yeah, well, prior to me knowing I was Japanese, um, the inspiration of that was, you know, I was born in the Chinese um, calendar, uh, year of the dragon is 64. Oh, right. I was born in 64, so that's nice. year of the dragon. And also, I was a huge Bruce Lee man, uh, fan. And me too. Yeah. yeah, so I watched all his movies back in the day, cool. and he was... Uh, considered the 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 dragon, you yeah. know, the little uh, yeah. the little dragon, um, so kind of stuck with that, you know. And and when I found out that I was getting a pro model, yeah, um, I needed some kind of iconic thing that could relate to who yeah, I was. Yeah. And uh, since I was a big fan of Bruce Lee, and I was born near the dragon, like, hey, a dragon would be kind of cool, yeah. you know. Oh, dragons so, are cool, man. Yeah, yeah cool. Okay, cool. So that's how that all came together. <coughs> nice, dude. Well, thank yeah. you. Thank you so thank much, you. Steve, man. Nice Appreciate to meet you, bro. It. Hell yeah. Appreciate cool, man. It. Thanks. Well, thanks, guys. Um, catch up with us next time on Skate Japan. Japan. Um, check out Steve's art. You can check the links down below. Look at this stuff here. Also, go. check out Steve's... Oh, your music too, Steve. Yeah. Play, yeah. play guitar in a band called The Faction. Ah, The Faction. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, and check out Steve's band, The Faction, online too. Also, guys, check out our Facebook links. Follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, and check out our YouTube. Have a good one. Rock on. Peace. You. Mate. <laughs> <laughs>